And hold the front page. The local boy making big news in his hometown. Why he left the high life in the US to start a newspaper in country Australia. Welcome back. One of the biggest losers in the coronavirus pandemic has been country newspapers. Around the regions, dozens have gone out of print and you'd be brave to bet on them ever coming back. But someone still has faith in print and is putting his money where his heart is. He's never worked in the newspaper business before, but when Michael Waite heard the paper from his old hometown in South Australia had shut down, well, he decided to start his own. Paul Marshall has the story. Narra Court is a town in the southeast of South Australia, famous for the World Heritage listed Narra Court Caves. It's a farming town, about 6,000 people. Michael Waite's hometown. This is the childhood home. Mum and Dad bought it a couple of years before I was born. Michael was a professional tennis player until his mid 20s. He says he was okay. Mum Sue says he was pretty good. He was handy, <laughs> as we say. When the under 18 state agent in Adelaide and uh, eventually progressed from South Australia to the uh, circuit in America, but more importantly, they educated at university over there. It was chasing a dream, so whether that was smart or not, we don't know. Similar to what I'm doing now. What Michael is doing now is starting up a local newspaper, the news, right across the road from the old paper, in what used to be a cafe. It's a young team in the office. See you, Daddy? Yeah. Oh, you got him on your shoes. Michael, this is headquarters. <laughs> yes, very glorious and illustrious. Narracourt's old newspaper, The Herald, had been around since 1875, but with lockdown, it stopped printing. Just before the virus, Michael, his American wife, Whitney, and their three daughters had left their home in Seattle to go travelling for a year. They made it as far as Narracourt. It's Scarlet. It's Scarlet. And who are you? Emily. This is Nora. And who's that? Hazel. And baby Hazel. Whitney is a doctor, a pediatrician. I'm doing very little to run the newspaper. I'm keeping the kids alive is <laughs> my, my role in this for the time being. It's been a whirlwind, frankly. We certainly haven't found our footing yet. We've started up a newspaper and we're trying to really just immerse ourselves in the community in every way we can. He works in the bakery, so he sees me out there early. Yeah, this is from the girls. <laughs> Do all newspaper editors have to wear pink ribbons? On they, thank you. I should probably take this off now, but if it's not this, it's, it's often nail polish or it's hairband, so I'll take the, I'll take the wrist bracelet, and uh, that seems like a good win. Thanks for buying our paper. <laughs> Very good. What's front page news? Uh, for us, this week, issue two, it was all about uh, this state and federal funding for two roundabouts. Uh, they're replacing existing roundabouts, but it's costing $8 million. His mum worked on the Herald for over 30 years, but that was the extent of Michael's newspaper knowledge. He's a finance guy, once ran for treasurer of Washington State, and worked for Bill Gates. In the last two years, just heading up accounting and finance for the whole... In 100 billion of investment portfolio. Does Bill put some money into Narracourt? No, no, well, sort of buy through me. <laughs> Michael knew nothing about laying out a newspaper, but a local graphic design company said they'd give it a go. Rob, how much experience do you have in the newspaper business? Um, probably about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the town is so excited, yeah, over the moon. Like the old Narracourt Herald, Country newspapers have been suspending their printed editions right around the country, and some may not be back. Even before the virus, it was a tough business. And right now, no one starts up a printed country newspaper. You'd think. Underwriting a newspaper in general in 2020 made no sense to me. I was so skeptical when I first started it. But I think the one path through to success is is that the relevant content is so intensely local that you can't literally get it anywhere else. Are you going to work? I hope so, but the chance of failure is huge. And it can't be as tough as raising three daughters. Hey, darling. You did that stop working, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ah, <laughs> oh, the parenting fail, 400 today. Um, Reporters, they're all like that. <laughs> What a fantastic story. That was so good. Jeez, I hope it's successful. Yeah. Oh, that's Chances of failure are huge, but we're giving it a go. I think that's just Love wonderful it. for the whole family. Wow, wife is terrific too. Ahead for you on Weekend Sunrise. Thank you, Paul Marshall. Beautiful as always. Play on with... Starting a local newspaper from scratch hardly seems like a good idea when so many regional newspapers are closing down. But in Narra Court in South Australia, a new publication has hit the presses. The man behind it has worked for billionaire Bill Gates and run for political office in the US. But personal and global issues have brought him home. Landline's Prue Adams finds out what inspired him to bankroll this ambitious project. For 140 years, Tuesday evenings have been print time for the Mount Barker Courier. And for almost 70 of those years, the Adelaide Hills paper has been owned and run by Norm Marston, almost certainly Australia's oldest reigning newspaper man. I think once you're in it, you can't get out of it. It's always something to do, something to improve. Despite it being the hardest times he's ever seen, the 91-year-old refused to close down during the coronavirus crisis. And now he and his grandson, production manager, have another paper piling off the presses, the Narracourt News. So what did you think when Michael came to you and said, uh, can you print our paper? <laughs> In the middle of a pandemic, you know, uh, yeah, not, I don't, food is crazy. The crazy brave person behind Australia's latest local publication is Michael Waite, owner, editor and newspaper newbie. What sort of experience do you have in running a newspaper? Ah, uh, none. <laughs> Very easy question. Next. <laughs> Uh, so That might be an advantage, you know, because people who run newspapers say they would never do it again. That's right. No, look, being naive on, on what it takes to launch a newspaper has helped us. The first issue of this weekly was printed on May the 5th. All 1,700 copies sold out in less than two days. So for this, the second issue, Michael Waite printed an extra 400 papers. There you go, Michael. Thanks, Steve. Thanks a lot, mate. And on a cold and drizzly night, he loaded them into his mother's old four-wheel drive and set off on the 300-kilometre trip back home. Wednesday morning in Narracourt, in South Australia's southeast. A town of around 8,000 people serving a district rich in wool and wine and beef and cropping. A new local? You have a good day. You too. Thanks, Mary. There we go. Have a good yeah. day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Within minutes of the town's news agency opening its doors, a steady stream of locals files in, willing to part with two dollars to buy the new paper. Morning, George. Morning, how are you? Good. You have the idea. Still standing up and breathing. <laughs> so we're going to have the new news. Yeah, the new news, yeah. Is this on landline, is it? If you thought newspapers were dead, the evidence here would suggest otherwise. Hey, oh, yeah. Ever since the first edition come out, last week. Yeah, it's been very popular. We ran out last week and let's hope they printed more this week. Not only are there more copies, but in the space of a week it increased from 16 pages to 20. Good morning, Ange. Good morning, Brenda. I'm just coming in to drop your papers off. Thank you. That's it's all local news. Nothing is syndicated through the big media chains. And at the veg shed, Brenda Gibbs says that's what her customers want. It's a lot more reading in it, um, and there's a lot more local news. So it's a, yeah, they're very pleased with it. It's 
making people talk to each other again. And that's not my words, that's what I'm hearing out as we're out. And that makes me feel, uh, that, that's better framed than I could have even framed it. And that's exactly what I think uh, we're building on. Okay, everybody, come on, out you come. Let's go and do some uh, garden raking. Got plenty of autumn leaves out there. Good on you, Nora. You lead the way. Michael Waite grew up in this home in Narracourt. As a young man, he went to the United States to play tennis on the international circuit. He later landed a job heading up Bill Gates' investment company's finance team and in 2016 ran for treasurer of Washington State and was very nearly successful. Last November, he returned home to visit his parents on what was to be a world tour with his young family. We give Nora the head start because she doesn't like to lose. <laughs> we came home for the summer uh, with my daughters and my wife. Uh, my mum ended up uh, with a, a major cancer diagnosis and, and, and so it's that undertone, undercurrent, I guess, um, that, that's kind of sad for our family and what we're working through. And then COVID hit, obviously, which completely curtailed our travels. And then to hear that the local newspaper shut down because of the virus and because of the it just it was just so counter to what I felt needed to happen um, and that really is what spun it up and and I, you know I guess it, it's really our passion project uh, both for my family and and that's how we've approached it the new news has sprung up rather audaciously right across the road from the long-standing Narracourt Herald now, the Narracourt Herald is one of more than 100 newspapers owned by Australian community media that have shut up shop and stood down staff in regional areas during the coronavirus crisis. I've tried to speak to someone from ACM. So far, no luck. The Herald had been going since 1875, and there is still no confirmation as to when or if it will reopen. Sue Waite, Michael's mother, had worked there in advertising sales for 35 years. Well, I was shocked, um, pretty horrified, because I never ever dreamt, even with, with the worst circumstances, that uh, a company like ACM would actually just walk away. And uh, because it just showed, for me, total disrespect to the local people who, who really do need local news. I was massively skeptical of underwriting a newspaper in 2020. Like, I, I really can't think of many worse business models to try to underwrite. And, but it actually, the, the fact that the, the incumbent was stepping off the field and yet the life was still going. I mean, in some ways, barely in some of these towns, but Narakot was still hanging on. That actually created the environment that you could do this. The office is sparse, to say the least. But only a month after putting together the business model on an Excel spreadsheet, there are two journalists on board. Well, sort of. Hey, how are you? Good, good. The newest recruit, Eliza Burlage, is still stuck in Horsham in Victoria, unable to cross the border into South Australia, although she is still filing stories. What, what are you kicking around as far as... Issue three for our paper, second one for you. Where, What's on your mind? Yeah, so I've had a really good chat this morning with one of the real estate agents in town um, just about how the pandemic's affected prices. Chris Oldfield is the other reporter and she's hit the ground running with a series of stories on the multi-million dollar roundabouts that will controversially allow road trains to travel through the town's main thoroughfare. Council opted to go... Roundabouts. Oh, they're spending eight million dollars on the roundabout, yeah. and that's a huge issue here. Yeah. I, I'm not a journalist. I've never been in this game, so I can't honestly tell you if I love this or not. But what I do love is fighting for this town. I love building organisations, and I love creating a team that's very committed to a set of a, a real mission and a set of values. Where possible, he's using local businesses, such as the printing company just down the road, which had lost work when events and field days were cancelled in the wake of the coronavirus scare. We'll probably run that over three columns, I think. Um, Do we have pictures? 
We always seem to not have pictures. <laughs> yes. Uh, Here, experienced graphic artist Sam Barnett is guiding the layout and newspaper design. It's gone from a very quiet time to flat out, basically, yeah. So um, it's obviously uh, been a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of hours, and getting a newspaper up and running from scratch. Whether Michael Waite is in this for the long haul is, of course, yet to be seen. He says it's not about making massive profits. He wants to create something that is sustainable and community-focused, that is supported by the town he grew up in. He always takes things like I do with both hands and runs with it and, um, yeah, give it a full go and we'll see, where, see what turns out. 25 cents from the sale of every copy is donated to a sporting group or service club. And the newly minted editor is excited for when sports and art events, field days and agricultural shows resume in whatever a post-COVID world looks like. What advice would you give to Michael Waite as he starts up a new newspaper? He doesn't know the game. He'd, he'd be struggling a bit. If failure uh, happens, and it's a very high chance it will, that we've done everything we can in the areas that we can control, which is that local content, the passion and the energy and the respect for ourselves and for the community. If that doesn't get returned, it will fail. And that's, that's okay. It deserves to fail. But here's hoping it doesn't, because we're really invested. <laughs> and that's the show for today. We hope you enjoyed it.